When parents or um, uh, obstetricians or midwives identify uh, a child now as having ambiguous genitalia or, or appearing to have a problem, then there is a far clearer pathway and of course information is far more accessible now. Well when I was born there was something there that appeared to be um, a phallus so uh, I guess they felt it's a boy. Very simply does something look like uh, it's male external genitalia or does somebody look like they've got female external genitalia or are they what are called ambiguous where you've got a mix of features. When I was um eight or nine years old, I started to develop breasts and, um, and I went through a quite a long time where I just couldn't um, relate to, to boys. There was something different about me. I didn't feel like a boy. I felt that I had a lot more in common with the girls. Sexual differentiation is, uh, it, it covers a group of diagnoses of syndromes that really affect the way that an individual grows and develops from the point of view of both their sexual function and their cosmetic appearance. And they're really classified according to three main criteria. That's their genetic makeup, their phenotypic makeup, so what they look like, and also their hormonal makeup. And any one of those three factors can in influence the way that somebody develops from the point of view of their outward and inward sex. I did try and, and live as a guy for, well, until I was 33, 34, uh, because I hated being, feeling isolated. Androgens are a group of hormones which include uh, particularly testosterone, that's the most well-known one, but there are other androgens too. And they're important uh, in terms of the way that we function from a, a male or female point of view because they act on our brain and our genitals and our testes so that it, that it alters the way that we produce sperm, it alters our function. It's known as partial androgen insensitivity syndrome um, and uh, it's, it's also known as PAIS uh, and it's um, apparently where the, uh, where, the, where the body doesn't respond to the testosterone or the androgens. In these uh, syndromes that we're talking about, um, they are XY children, so they have the genetic makeup to make them a boy, but they lack the ability to respond to that testosterone drive. That's either partially or completely. That means that they are not able then to develop the normal male features that we would expect them to be. And that can be both in terms of sexual appearance, but also behaviourally to some extent. In the end, it was uh, 2007, I, I said I can't go any further uh, in this, in, under this uh, pretension. I had to do something about it. Hormone therapy for these patients uh, will vary enormously if they're going up a, a female sex of rearing route, uh, they will need the, the female hormones to help them balance that. If they're being taken down a male route, clearly trying to preserve the testes, uh, but uh, considering uh, hormone supplementation, depending on their levels, may also be important. So those are important aspects as far as the hormonal side of it is concerned. It would be quite wrong to give the message that surgery is bad, uh, in these uh, in these patients, because there are some times when it's very important that um, that, su that surgery is used, and it but it has to be used appropriately. I'd say most of all not to fear this, because it's not some kind of um, subversion. It's a willful subversion. It's some. Um, it's a genuine feeling that the child has. There's also a wide variance of normal. Um, so it's very important that people don't jump to conclusions and that people don't start being alarmist about things. The most sensible thing for a parent or a doctor who is confused by what they see is simply to ask for advice. We have uh, a multidisciplinary team that can help them with either being comfortable with the decisions they make or if there are changes that need to be made, helping them make them. For more information, visit www.nhs.org dot uk